What's up guys, David one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah yes, list day, and today we're continuing my series of looking at the main sets of the game with uh, star something, star overdrive, uh, sunlight yellow overdrive. My very blood is a symphony within me! Sunlight yellow overdrive! Yes! This set is actually pretty solidly good. You know, it's, it's nice that we finally got some good sets. I'm actually super excited for it. One of my favorite cards of all times in here, so woot. But before we get into the set, um, I just want to bring attention to the news, Gyo. If you guys haven't watched it yet, here's a little clip. We're not even doing this live. If this thing wasn't really live and all post-editing, could I do this? Run, 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 do run, run. Yes! So make sure you get over there and watch that. Look out for the August edition coming up in a few weeks. I'm gonna try to get a guest star for it. Just wanna bring attention to it so that the people who uh, uh, thought it was something completely different than what it is, no, trust me, it's not your, it's not a typical news video. But anyway, let's get started on the top 10 cards in Stardust Overdrive. Number 10 is Gemini Spark. Gemini Spark is a quick play spell card that reads, tribute one level four, Gemini monster, target one card of the field, destroy it, then draw one card. This card would be a hell of a lot better if it wasn't stuck in Gemini decks and would be a hell of a lot better if its tribute cost wasn't specifically a level four Gemini monster. That's a double whammy of being stuck in a bad deck. However, uh, to pop a card, draw a card, that's, that's good card advantage, you know? I mean, it's it's even card advantage, but it's cycling through your deck. It's chainable. Y you know what I mean. Overall, really solid card. Uh, like I said, it'd be cool if it was in a better deck, but give credit where credit's due. Number nine is Quick Draw Synchron. Quick Draw Synchron's a hard one for me to place on the list because it's, it's really only good as the format that it's in. If we got a deck with level five machines or that wants to make synchro plays, it's, it's, it's really good. There isn't one of those decks, then yeah, no one, it's not seeing any play. But it is extremely versatile, and I do really like the card. I, preci I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Quick Draw Synchron is a level 5 wind machine tuner monster with the following effect. You can special summon it from your hand by sending one card from your hand to the graveyard. It's not a discard, it's a send, so boo, but okay. So it's got a little self summoning ability. Neat. It's a level 5 machine. It'd be cool if it was a light, but, you know, we can forgive the wind thing for being level 5 machine. You know, that's got some function. Holla at your boys, it's, uh, infinity. And if you synchro summon with it, using it like a tuner, you can substitute it as any of the synchron tuners. So you can synchro any of those synchro monsters that require a specific synchron tuner. So that's, that's also neat. It, it, it's got, it's got options. However, to balance it, you can't just use it to synchro anything. It can only be used as a synchro material for a for a synchro monster that requires a synchron synchro synchron synchro but yeah it's just a solid solid card exactly what you need in the middle of synchro format next up is your boy dark simorg simog simurge simorg i suppose it's a word simorg's a dark Level 7 Wing Beast monster with the following effect. Well, on the field, it's also targeted it as a wind monster. Okay, it's cool. You can banish a dark monster to wind monster from your graveyard to special summon it from your hand or the graveyard. Ooh, neat. That crap's not once per turn, man. Hmm, Linky. Also, it's got a continuous ability that says your opponent can't set cards on the field. So, like, hey, that's pretty cool. Against like a trap heavy deck or something like, you know, maybe True Draco where they need to put their traps face down first unless they search them from the deck and play or activate, activate them from the deck. You know what I mean? Certain decks need to be able to set cards on the field first. So this will kind of bugger them up. And it obviously you can mix it with other like floodgate monsters to like create a game state where your opponent literally just can't play a card. <laughs> I don't know. You could put it with a bunch of other cards. Your opponent can't do anything. Cheesy. Number seven's Infernity Necromancer. Oh, here we go. The womboist of wombo combo decks in the history of the game. The deck famous for just stupid infinite loops to just cycle absurd amounts of cards. Infernities. And this is one of the cards that is key to that strategy. 
If this card's a normal summoned, it's changed to defense position. If you have no cards in your hand, it gains the following effect. You can select one Infernity Monster in your graveyard, special summon it. That's not once per turn. Do you see the loops? Can you feel the loops? Can you feel the loops tonight? I'm not sure what else to say about it, mostly because I don't know how the deck works, other than it's really boring to watch somebody play it on YGO Pro, because they take a million minute turn. I lost interest after, like, move three. However, I will not take away from the fact that, it, you know, back in the heyday, it was absurdly powerful, people who play the deck are super dedicated to it, and for some reason, it doesn't matter what kind of crazy format, ban list, whatever you know, new master rule there is, somebody finds a way to make this deck stupid and uh, cause people to ask for more cards to be put on the list for it. The guys are dedicated to the wombo combo, man. Number six is Archlord Christia. 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 Archlord Christia is a big old level eight fairy with the following effect. If you have exactly four fairy-type monsters in your graveyard, not more, not less, you can just special summon this thing from your hand. Neat. That's free real estate. Neither player can special summon monsters. Oof. It's like Tiny Turtle, but it's a really, really big beater. So your opponent can't special summon, you can't special summon, and because it's got a lot of attack power, it's kind of annoying to get off the board. And you might think, you might think, that special summoning condition is kind of a pain in the butt because it's like exactly four. However, we've already proven that like it's it's not a big deal. Uh, those fairies with like the the planet names, what are they called? Like Venus that sh summons the shine balls. Herald of Ultimateness can do it. Like there's tons of decks where if you open the right way, there's like a set order of operations. And you just kind of fall into four fairies in the grave, and then along the way while you're doing something else, you can just slap this thing on board. The ultimateness one's funny, because you end up with ultimateness and this, and it's like, you know, come at me, bro, but, you know. Eh. <laughs> I like this card, I really do. The top five, baby. This is a fun set, man. This is a fun set. There's some, like, good, relevant cards that still pop up in decks today. So that's like, you know, that's a sign of a well-aged set. Preparation of Rites. Add a level seven ritual monster from your deck to your hand, then, you can add a ritual spell from your graveyard to your hand. What's awesome about this is those two things are completely unrelated, so it doesn't have to be a ritual spell that's even remotely has anything to do with the ritual monster, which is why pre-prep was printed as a way to kind of like nerf this for certain decks, because this was on the ban list for a while, and then it was limited for a while, and we finally got it at three, so. Back in Necro's format, though, this was a, this was a stupid top deck, like plus one, baby. Mm. And even now, it, it works in almost every Ritual deck ever. It's just more consistency. You go, girl. Here you go. Favorite card in the set. Wish it could be number one, except limited and forbidden cards get chunked up the list automatically. Swap Frog. I'm a frog player. I like the deck. I don't know why. Maybe because Totally Awesome is really powerful and it's like kind of trolly, like how silly the artwork is. I don't know, there's something funny about the idea of like a bunch of frogs are just like really good. I don't know. Silly thing to be good. It's like not a huge dragon or or a wizard or a warrior. It's, 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 a, it's just a frog. Like it's not even like a mystical frog. It's literally just like a poison dart frog. It's just what it is. It's like a real animal. Just It's just funny to me. What's he do? You can special summon this thing by discarding another water monster from your hand. Graveyard setup. When this card is summoned, summoned. Not normal, not special, not flip, just summoned. So whenever it hits the board, mm. send a level two or lower aqua type water monster from your deck to the graveyard. Dace now once per turn. Feels, feels good. Once per turn, you can return this thing to the hand so that you can then normal summon later this turn one extra normal summon for a frog monster except himself unless your hand is really frog heavy that that doesn't seem to happen too much but you know it does happen from time to time and you can only gain this effect once per turn so you don't keep accruing normal summons why is this card good because it, it dumps ronin totin and dupe frog to the graveyard and, du and ronin totin special summons itself from the graveyard this sets up your frog engine to do frog things whether it was back in the day for tribute fodder for a monarch or nowadays to make miss star boy totally awesome or whatever other shenanigans you want to do the marincess things am i still pronouncing that right i don't know i just love this little poison boy 
Number three is the only limited card on the list, Gateway of the Six. It's a six Sam continuous spell with the following ability. Each time a six samurai monster is normal or special summoned, you can put two Bushido counters on this card. You also can remove Bushido counters from this card in order to activate an effect according to how many Bushido counters removed. If you get rid of two, you can target a six samurai or Shion monster that gains 500 attack to the end of the turn. Yay. Four, add a six samurai monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand. Ah, now we're getting to effects you'd actually want to use. Six, target a Shion effect monster in your graveyard and special summon it. Yeah. And like six sam monsters tend to like spam on the board, so you might be able to use this a couple of times during a wombo combo. Add something back, special summon something from the graveyard, keep your, your, your stuff going. It's an engine, man. It's a one card engine. Probably why it's at one. <laughs> Gateway's just really strong. It's just a really powerful card. Now, number one and number two are both banned, so it's really hard to say which one is more broken, so therefore is more deserving to be number one. Um, you know what, we're just gonna, we're just gonna shotgun it. Number two is Jin, Releaser of Rituals. This level three Dark Fiend monster has the following effect. You can banish this card from your graveyard as the level cost for the Ritual Summon of a Ritual Monster. So you can put it towards three stars for a Ritual Summon. And it's in the grave, so it's like, it's just free. And the player who Ritual Summons a monster using this monster as material, the other player can't Special Summon. Oof. While you control the Ritual Summon monster that was Ritual Summoned using this as material. This is part of the famous gin lock that would, uh, that the Necros used to do. They go through this wombo combo with your, with your Levolval chain and all this other shenanigans in order to get this thing in the hand of grave and then you summon like, what was it? It was either Klaus or was it? I don't remember, it's been so many years. But you would special summon and then and then your opponent wouldn't be able to do anything. It's basically, it was kind of dice rolly because if the Necros player one went before Necros player two and opened the gin lock, the Necros player two had a hard time doing anything. So this card defined an entire format where people who even were not even playing Necros were still main decking things like Bowl Blader because it was a searchable Rota target that could just like crash into this thing just to get rid of it. Like, it's pretty bad when one card defines an entire format, making people make deck building choices around one card. And it's kind of just an innocuous pudgy genie, right? Like, it's, <laughs> but man, locking your opponent out of special summons is, is pretty brutal. Could it come back? And with all the banned cards on the My List series, we kind of just touch on whether we think it can come back or not, whether it needs an errata. I don't know. Could it come back? Sure, anything could come back if Konami deems it so. But should it? Uh, if Unicor was kept at one like it is right now, I don't think Necroz would do too much because Lavalval Chain's still gone. I mean, they might be able to figure out a way to use it. Could the deck use it still? Of course. Is there other ritual decks that might try to use it? Uh, of course. Are any ritual decks meta right now? No. It might be okay. It might be okay. As an errata, um, maybe it's like it only lasts until like the end of the next turn or something. One of your turn, one of your opponent's turn, and then it's, I don't know, maybe? Who knows? Pudgy Genie. We also have some honorable mentions because like I said before, the set's actually pretty good. First up, we got Moray of Greed. Shuffle two water monsters from your hand in your deck, draw three cards. It's a three for three, so it's a... Uh, it's no real advantage. And because you're adding monsters back, you don't really thin your deck at all. So you have a chance of redrawing the cards you were get, trying to get rid of. So it's not really getting you through your deck. It's, a, it's kind of a funky draw card. That's why it's an honorable mention, but uh, it has seen play in water strategies before. So I'll, I'll give it its time in the spotlight. It's, it's the card that we have to work with. So people have done it. It's kind of just like, Boneless Magical Mallet, which I wonder if Anli is probably better. And the card's a Stygian Dirge. Trap card modulates uh, all the levels of your opponent's monsters down by one. Nowadays, uh, with Link monsters, who would really care? But back in the day, this was a solid, solid side deck option against uh, XC spam decks like Burning Abyss or Satellar Knights because uh, like, so Teller Knights are all level 4s, they make rank 4s, you make all their guys level 3, they probably don't have anything in their extra deck they can even make. And, like, Burning Abyss is even worse, because they go down to 2s, and, like, you know, uh, a so Teller Knight might put a, a couple choice rank 3s in his extra deck just in case of the Stygian Dirge, and there's some good rank 3s, so that's not the end of the world, but, like, the generic rank 2s for that Burning Abyss player, 
feels bad, man. And then they're also not a Burning Abyss monster, so it just totally borks his strategy anyway. What a pain in the butt. But nowadays it's kind of irrelevant because the Link monsters, you could out it with Phoenix or whatever, so if it was actually in your way. But it had its time in the spotlight, so we'll give it its dues. And then a uh, uh, dishonorable mention, is uh it, it it's it's dark rabbit and shine palace these cards like came out i don't know like eight years after they were supposed to we just like didn't get them in the pegasus starter deck i don't know why uh they were supposed to be in there because i'm pretty sure they were in the ocg version of the deck but we didn't get them so they just been like sitting in the import hopper forever and they finally decided to give them this set and they wouldn't have even been good when they were supposed to come out so it's a little unfair to say they're terrible because everyone knows that they're just a cheesy import but uh, at least Dark Rabbit's cool, I guess, from a from a like a collector standpoint. But Shine Palace, man, given a light monster, it's like 700 attack cares. So this is what like Axe of Despair is for. Also, Shine Palace is a disappointment. Why is nothing to do with Toon World? It's got Toon World on the. It has nothing to do with Toons. It's so dumb. It's incredibly disrespectful. Whatever. And before we get to number one, oh, we obviously our sponsor today is Metamats. If you want a custom cloth playmat, go to MetaMats website and then it, you can use the promo code Troll the Meta and you'll get like 10% off your order. Helps the channel, helps them. It's the best. So go check it out. And number one is Level Eater. Yeah, I figured uh, going forward, Level Eater is probably the stronger of the two band cards and was less likely to come back. However, it's probably easier to errata because. You could change its effect and not totally change how it works, unlike Jin, which I'm not even sure what you'd really do, because like it would just literally change how it works, because it doesn't do that much. <laughs> anyway, what, is, uh, what does this little bug do? If it's in your graveyard, you can target a, uh, a face-up level 5 or higher monster, reduce that monster's level by 1, and then special summon this card from your graveyard. It can't be used for tribute, except for a tribute summon, so you can't, like, Cannon Soldier, Cannon Soldier. You can't just keep using Cannon Soldier fuel for this thing. It doesn't work. But uh, what what we really want this card for back in the day was synchro plays because some good synchro monsters can't just be like one tuner, one non tuner. It's like one tuner plus two or more non tuners. So the fact that this goes on board, reduces a guy's level, and counts as a one means like your level count hasn't changed. So you can still add up to the same number, but you got a bonus monster, so you can make those other plays. Plus. If you just synchro it away the first time, then you can bring it back, so you can like synchro climb, so you can make one of those synchros that's like a synchro of a synchro. So like, you know, you, you got tons of cheesy crap you can do with it. it it's it's pretty it's pretty good. Level one, so I think it saw some play in some like uh XC spam too as well. But but I'm pretty sure what it would be used now for and what it why it was banned was you would link climb with it. Cause uh, we don't care what the levels of stuff is most part for link monsters. This is just a free body. It's a dark, it's a level one. It would be so abused. When Links first came out, people were like wondering if this would get banned and other people were like, nah, that's dumb. I think even I was like, oh, I don't think it needs to get banned. That's silly. Because all the Link monsters we had were kind of speeders, didn't really do much at the beginning. So I was like, well, who cares? But now that we have like nightmares and orcus, world chalice dudes and all the other link monster guys, you know, and they're like co-links, you just, your opponent can't do nothing. Yeah, and they're all generic. You should probably not have level leader. How would you fix it? Uh, you, you just once per duel it like glow up bulb. I think it'd be fine. Anyway guys, that was Stardust Overdrive. I hope you enjoyed it. It was actually Actually a really solid set. <laughs> Haven't seen this many band cards since like a DM set. So good job there 5Ds. So if there was a card in the set that you think I missed, let me know in the comments below and be sure to join the Discord, which is where these are made. Like all the guys in Discord make this and give it to me for final review. So if you really want to vouch for your favorite card in the, an upcoming set, make sure you get in that Discord so that you can uh, you can be the voice of reason so that you don't have to just complain in the comments <laughs> because that won't ever fix the problem. You need to fix the problem. You, man, I believe in you. There's also the Facebook and the Patreon. If you guys want to hook me up with, with that stuff, you know, I post memes on the Facebook and the Patreons just, you know, keep the lights on in the house. So, you know, that's, that's cool. And remember, guys, if you don't troll the meadow, who will? I will see you guys next time. <laughs> My insect queen thinks this is the best channel on the web. You should swat that subscribe button. Watch these other perfectly ultimate great videos and stop bugging me. Click something or I'll exterminate you once and for all.